for the war cry. This one for Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Can't forget about the bros in the North Tribe. Enough said that we serving to the Most High. And it's no lie, on the Most High. We teach the laws in this earth. The Lord touched my mouth, He said, Use His words. He made me a prophet from birth. This work, it ain't for the weak. This earth, it ain't for me. This war ain't carnal but spiritual. For the battle here is not flesh weak, but the flesh weak. So I press feet on the laws of God, so don't test me. And when it's time for war, the bro sounds the horn. I'm like a beast unleashed. You can't tame me. You preachers like cowards. You ain't rightly dividing the word of truth. You worship the creature instead the creator. Your hour is coming to mutilate you. Oh, true. You washing, you dipped in the blood of the lamb. Gee, golly, goddamn, I don't understand. The pastor's right, man. Then where is the man who stands in the midst of seven golden lamps? Ain't no time to dance. We pull up our pants. We marry not now, but surely it's near. He who wants wisdom, then please give it near. Put on from the fear. Put on from the fear. The whole armor of God is what we need to wear. Exactly, sis, because every brother and sister, every Israelite, so-called blacks or Hispanics out here, we must repent and return back to the Most High God. And in order for us to repent, we must first learn the laws of the Most High God to know what we need to repent of. Because you can't repent, say you can't say I repent of my sins, and you don't know what sin is. The sin, sin is breaking of the law. What you got, bro? Bring it up. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to be and, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet if they shall be thank themselves, which means remember, read on. In the land whither they were carried captives, in the land where we were carried captives. We, so-called blacks, were carried captive here. We must remember who we are. That's why we out here in the streets teaching our people. That you are the Israelites according to the Bible. That you are the Israelites according to the, uh, Deuteronomy 28. That's why it's a sign to show you who you are. We are. And repent. And repent. And make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive. So we must repent as a people. No, the first step is we think ourselves. Remember who we are. That's right. Then we must repent. In order for you to repent, you gotta learn the laws. Then after you repent and acknowledge your sins, you must then uh, stay away from it. Try, try to not do it again. Which means you must keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. That's right. That's right. In the land of our captivity. The reason, like we brought on Deuteronomy 20, is the reason why we went into slavery was because we rebelled against the laws of the Most High God. We wanted to be like the other nations. We wanted to do like they wanted to do. If once you read the history, the actual Israelites went into captivity several times. We was in captivity of the Babylonians, of the Medes and the Persians, of the uh, uh, Greeks, the Romans, the Arabs, and today, America. Because why? We rebelled against the law of such commandments. And as you, you know, since these days are the last days, right? So before Christ returns, he's going to send his prophets to his people to wake them up so they can know who they are, so they can return back to God. Because salvation only belongs unto Israel. And that's right. Everybody in the world. That's why I'm bringing out right here in Psalms 48 that these other nations are the enemies of the Most High God. So the question is, like the church, Christian church teach that uh, God loves everybody and everybody can get repentance. If that's the case, why is he saying in his words that these are his enemies? That makes no sense. Matter of fact, uh, give me Amos 3, 2. Give me Amos 3, verse 1. Because the Most High God chose the Israelites. The Israelites are his children. That's right, that's right. Churches. This is Amos 3, verse 1, sister. Amos chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel. This word was spoken against the children of Israel. Read on. 
against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So the Most High God saying, You only, the Israelites, have I known out of all of the families of the earth. That goes against the saying that God loves everybody. And uh, uh, yes, the Most High God created all man, but he chose a certain people. He said, you only, Israel, have I known, you know. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Therefore, he punished us for our iniquities, our sins. That's the reason why we went to slavery. That's the reason why we live in the ghettos. That's the reason why our people are unjustly killed by our enemies. Because the Most High God is using these other nations to punish us because we rebelled against them. That's right. So in order for things to change, we must change in our minds. We must first bethink ourselves, repent of our sins, and live according to the law of statutes of man. We must return back to the Most High God and repent as an Israelite, not as a so-called African-American. Because remember, sister, our name, our so-called nationality name changed every couple of years. We were known as niggas, negro, colored, uh, 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 blacks. Now it's Af Af yeah, Afro-American. Now it's African-American. The Chinese name don't change. That's right. That's right. They've been known as the Chinese for hundreds of years. Their names don't change every couple of years. But why do I? Why? Because we just read to you. Uh, we read to you in Psalms uh, 83 that these other nations came against us with one consent, and to remove the name of Israel as being a nation. It's okay, sister. You can bring all questions up. We all need to walk. That's right. That's right. And I'm going to show you. 
Martin Luther King was from the tribe of Judah. He was a so-called African American or so-called black man. Like I was saying, this book is for the Israelites. This, in this book, it actually prophesied about Martin Luther King. Being a false prophet, let's we'll bring it out. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 25. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesied lies in my name, say. That prophesied lies in the Most High God's name, because remember, his all of his speeches, they didn't come out of the scripture. That's right. He studied Gandhi, a peaceful protest. That's where he got all of that from. Gandhi, which is an East Indian, or the scriptures call them Elam. They descend from the nation of Elam, the East Indians. Read on. I have heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? So now, you can look through world history. The only well-known man that said, I have a dream, I have a dream, is not king. That's right. And this prophecy applies to him. Like I said, this book is about the Israelites, for the Israelites, to the Israelites. That's right. It's That's not right. for all nations. Why do you think this prophecy fits him? Because he was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. And he led hundreds and thousands of people astray by telling him his lies, his dream, that we should come together. But remember, before that, when we, when we were actually uh, segregated, we were actually better off because we depended on one another. We supported and built up one another. But as soon as that stopped and we started depending on our enemies, like the scriptures say, everything was in hell. That's when, our neighbor, that's when you came out with your uh, plan turn a little bit. The, the black family was destroyed. Yep. It used to be tight knit. Now, you got your baby mamas out here. No fathers in the house. So now the children, the boys, they raise up mimicking their mother, which is why you have your homosexual black man. A feminine black man, because they're looking after their mother. You have no fathers in there. So that happened. So really, segregation was better for us. Because we were lying right. and depending right. on one right. another. But, but that, that, that right there, that was a part of the curses too. Uh -huh. That we were relying on our enemies. Sister, you got a question? Yeah. What's your question, sister? Okay, go ahead. What's your question? What's your question? Maybe my train is over, but I can't get that much battle. Hey, get that uh, one first. Yeah, go ahead. What's your question, sister? What's the spirit you need? What's the spirit? The spirit is the laws. We can prove that to you right here. So in order for you to have a spiritual awakening, you must keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the most high God. In order for you to have a spiritual awakening, you must keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the most high God. That's right. Because the laws are spiritual. The law is spiritual. It converts the soul. So does, does that mean that God is talking to me? Uh, I don't know what, what, what you might call a spiritual awakening, but for instance, I have so much stuff going on. The faith is so heavy. I've been so tired. And I got on my knees and I prayed to my God. And I have never ever felt a chance to pray. Sis, did you pray to this God right here? Okay, let's get to your point. Let's go. And I prayed to them and I had a spiritual wake because I felt okay. it. I'm so it's tired. Happening. It's happening. A lot happening. of people say that. You gotta just believe. All right. Hey, if you got any questions, we're here, brother. Footprint. Tell me that stop worrying about everything and give it all to you. Have you all power? This is the little trap there, bro. Let's get bring out some scripture here. The book of John, verse 6, chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. 
The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that he's speaking to us from us is Bible. These are his words. They are spirit. Understand that. So in order for you to have a spiritual rape, awakening, you must be in these Bible. You must be in this Bible. That's you must keep these right. laws, statutes, and commandments. Read it from the top. It's just it's slow. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The change. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words, which are these laws, statutes, commandments, this Bible, they are spirit and they are life. Because if you want eternal life, you must keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. That's right. That's right. So let's bring out. Uh, let's 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 uh, build this system. Let's bring out the uh, law about pants. So, you know, as, as one of the laws to the Most High God is that women must must wear monster pearl and that women must not wear what the what the pants are supposed to wear. Okay, then why you not wear it? If you already know. What is your book, sis? What, what's the Jesus Christ book? The Old Testament? It's not the same thing. Our people are smitten with the mask. That's right. That's what we out here to make our people up. So they can return back to what's our God. As soon as we bring in out the laws, I know that. I don't I want to do what I want to do. A sister believed that the most high God is speaking to her even though she's rebellious. The most high God not gonna come to wicked, you be put to death. That's right, right. Let's bring it up. The book of first John, chapter 2, verse 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. So the scriptures is called your liar. He didn't say I know him and keep not his commandments. Means a liar. That's right. That's, that's right. not our words. That's the Most High God. So if the Most High God just came to speak to you, sister, he'll tell you a liar. Because you're not keeping his laws. As soon as we bring the laws out, our people want to run. They don't want to hear the laws. Yeah, let's bring this up. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 9. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. We are rebellious people, which is the reason why we went into slavery. That's the right. reason why we went into captivity, because we are a rebellious people. As soon as we bring the laws out, or I, I know that, but I don't want to do that. I want to do me. Like the scriptures go back, we are rebellious people. Read it again. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. So don't tell us nothing, don't see my sins, prophesy I don't want, I don't want you to know my sins. That's what the sisters say, I, I, I already know that, I, but I don't, I, don't, I don't do me, I want to wear my pants. But she told us that the Most High God came to speak to her. That's a lot. Read on. Prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. So she wants to hear smooth things. Things that make her feel good. She wants to hear the motivational speeches that your pastor teaches in the church. That's right. That's right. Like prosperity doctrine. She don't want to hear that she in the midst of sin and that she needs to repent. But the Most High God sent his prophets out here to give his people warning before he returns and the day of destruction is at hand. Because if you are in the midst of your sin, during the day when Christ returns, you will be put to death. That's right. These pastors are leading y'all astray. They're, they're motivational speakers just to make you feel good so you can come up out of their pockets. Give me that money. That's all they consider with. They, they enforce tithes, tithes of the Old Testament. Tithes was for the Le Levitical priests. Mm -hmm. We no longer have land. The Levitical priests, the so-called Haitians, are no longer in the priest's office. So why does the pastor in your churches say uh, the Old Testament is done away with, but they enforce tithes? That's tithes right. was from the Old Testament. Let you know that your pastors are liars. That's right. They only want your money. 
It's a business. They're gonna make you feel good because they want you to keep on coming back. Right. Just like any store. They're gonna have sales for you because they want you to come back and spend your money. They're not gonna teach you, thus said the Lord. We out here to teach you, thus said the Lord. We don't want your money. We not out here for donations. We out here to teach you who you are according to the Bible so you can repent. That's showing love one for another. That's showing love for our brothers and sisters. We out here to give you one. That's what we out here to do. But our people don't want to hear the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. They want to keep on doing what the hell they want to do. Let's uh let's go back to Psalms uh 40, 40, 40. to let you people know that these other nations that run your community, they got all they own all of these stores in your community, they are really your enemies, and they're the enemies of the most high God. Right, bring it out, huh? Let's read. Psalm 83, verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So no matter where you go, so-called black man or Hispanic man, you are hated by the other nations. That's right. No matter where you go, read on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Come, let us cut them off from being a nation. How did they cut us off from being a nation? They put us in slavery. That's how they cut us off. Because in slavery, they changed our name. We no longer spoke our native language, which was Hebrew. We had to speak their language. That's why some of our brothers and sisters speak Spanish. Because their oppressors spoke Spanish. That's, right. That's why we speak English today. Because the people that oppressed us and came against us spoke English. Read on. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That we will no longer be called the Israelites of the Bible. Because sisters, y'all are Israelites according to scripture. That's right. You can read that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 and back. Y'all must repent and return back to the Most High God. Read on. Verse 5, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They are confederate against the Most High God and the Israelites. Read on. The tabernacles of Edom. The so-called white man. Read on. And the Israelites. The Arabs. Read on. And of Moab. The Chinese. And of the Hagarines. The Egyptians. Gabal. Hamites. And Ammon. The Japanese, read on. And Amalek. The so-called white man that calls himself a Jew, read on. The Philistines. Africans. With the inhabitants of Tyre. More Africans. Assur also is joined with them. Assyrians. They have opened the children of Lot. Salah. So all these nations took crafty counsel against the so-called Israelites. That way, they put us in captivity. That way, we will be no longer known as Israel. That we will be known as African Americans. You can't find the word African American in the scriptures. It's 18 nations in the scriptures. The question is, which one do you descend from? That's right. There was a brother up here earlier saying we were we descend from Ham. We showed that brother he was alive. He's in that Christian doctrine that we just have. We need to tell you according to the verses, according to the verses in the scriptures in Deuteronomy 28, that you are the Israelites. That's right, right? That's what Deuteronomy 28 and 46 is saying. That these persons will be a sign upon you forever to let you know that you are Israelites. So that way when we bring these verses out in the scriptures, you will see that that applies to you and your people. That's what the sign and the wonder is. As a matter of fact, we try to tell our people that we must keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And uh, uh, the sister was up here talking about that was the Old Testament. But let's read it in the New Testament. Let's go to Matthews 19 and let's see what Christ said about how you can get the kingdom of heaven. Did things change? Did Christ say, oh, no, you don't got the law? You just got to do what I tell you. No, let's see what Christ said. Read it. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? 
So this is Israelite man is coming to Christ and saying, what good thing must I do to have eternal life for the kingdom of heaven also? We don't. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. So the Christ is just giving hom homage and praise to the Most High God, letting him know there's only one that's good, which is the Most High God. We don't. But if thou wilt enter into life. So hold on, brother, right here. Listen up, listen up, brother. If you will enter into life or get the kingdom of heaven, we don't. Keep the commandments. You must keep the commandments in order to get eternal life. In order to get the kingdom of heaven, Christ said himself that you must keep the commandments. Read it again. Hold on, you got a question, brother? Come on up, we all here for our people. I just wanted to know about Adam and Eve. Uh-huh, you want to know about Adam and Eve? Which one go? Let's go to, let's go to, uh, when Adam was free. Number, number one, bro. this isn't a religion. This is our culture. This is our real culture that was taken away from us. That's right. Do you realize that Christ is a black man? Christ is a black man? Yes. That's right. The scriptures actually describe Christ two times. No, man. You're telling me that Christ never walked this earth? I Yes. Let's get going first. Let's get going first. Let's show this brother that Christ, this is a description of Christ. Physical body. Christ walked this earth, correct? So that means he came as his brothers and sisters. Matter of fact, we're going to get all of that. First, we're going to get you the description of Christ. This is Revelation 1. Real. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. White like wool, brother. Like your head. Let's go to verse 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation means the revealing, the revealing of Jesus Christ, right? Read it again. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to shoot unto his servants things that must shortly come to pass. Now, shoot means to show. Okay? Now, we're about to show you the description of Christ. Jump to that. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Read on. As white as snow. Which means it was gray. The head on his head and on his beard was white, just like yours, brother. Read on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. He had, his eye colors were reddish because he drunk wine. He wasn't a drunk, but he drunk wine. Therefore, his eye, the white of his eyes were reddish. Read on. And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Yeah, it's brown. His feet was brown, right? Read on. As if they burned in a furnace. Anything you burn in a furnace comes out what color? Comes out black. Adam named all the animals, yes. Bro, no, he was taught by the most high God. Let's get there. Understand this, brother. See, this this, this, this showing you the mindset of our people today. The question you should be asking is, who were we before slavery? That's right. Who are we according to the truth? There was no problem during the time of Adam. So who was he talking about? The most I got. Let's, let's put it out of scripture. Let's yeah, let's show the creation of Adam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go to scripture. Uh, That's us. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. What colors is the dirt of the ground? Brown. Let you know that Adam was a black man, right? The deeper you go into the dirt, the darker it gets. Read on. And breathe into its nostrils the breath of life. 
the breath of life, that was when the Most High God taught him. Because the breath of life is the laws. I got one more question. Yeah. What was the purpose of the Bible? What was the purpose of the Bible? We got the Bible is like a history book of the Israelites. Let's get it. Let's go through it. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. Correction. Reproof means correction. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. Instruction on how we are to live our life. Real. That the man of God may be perfect. That the man of God may be perfect. Hold on, brother. I got one more scripture for you. One more scripture. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Let's see the reason why we see on this earth. Let's see the whole duty of man. Why are we alive? What is our purpose? I'm about to show it to you. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. The whole matter. Why are we alive? We don't fear God. We have to fear the most high God. For his judgments real and keep his commandments and keep his commandments yeah you're going to honor these respect it's like it says honor thy mother and father you respect your mother and father you don't show the disrespect fear you fear his judgments because if you're disobedient you're rebellious he won't bring curses or plagues upon you that's why we live in these ghettos and slums that's why that's why we're at the bottom of society and we are oppressed. That's why you have things going on about our people being killed unjustly. Because our people lack the fear of the Most High God. That's and right. if you fear the Most High God, you will keep His laws. Okay. Thank you. All right, brother, man. Check out that path. There's a website on it, man. You are Israelite. That's According right. to the scriptures, you must repent to turn back to the Most High God. Right. Read that again, bro. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's right. So now this right here, this book of Ecclesiastes is in the Old Testament. And it said the whole duty of men is to fear the most high God and to keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of men. That's the reason why you are alive. Then we also read in uh, Matthew 19 that Christ himself said that you must keep the commandments if you want the kingdom better. That's if you want eternal life. We out here to give our people warning so you can remember who you are according to the scriptures. Bro, you got a question, man? We out here for our people. You know what I'm saying? Just any question, bro. Any question. Because you know, a lot of us, we were taught in the Christian church. That's right. A lot of us was deceived in the Christian churches with their doctrines. But when you come and you actually read these scriptures, it's contrary to what they teach. That's like, right. For example, what's that old saying if you want to uh, hide something from a black man? What do you put in it? Yeah, but you also put it in the book. Because they know how people won't read it, what it says. That's right. They'll listen to what the pastor says instead of reading. Instead of seeking the words of the Most High God. They'll listen to what a man is saying up on the pulpit. That man's only interested in your money. That's why they pass that collection plate around three times. Because they only interested in your money. How the hell is the pastor going to be riding around in a Bentley, but the people in the congregation are living in poverty? That makes no sense. He's only there for your money. He's going to make you feel good. He's going to give you those motivational speeches just so you can get that money. Just like these stores, they have these advertisements, these sales to keep you coming back to spend your money. When you go in some of these other stores that are owned by your other, the other nations, your enemies, according to the scriptures, they don't give a damn about you. They just want you to come in and spend your money. That's it. That's just like the Crep has the churches. Crep, Low, Dollar, and all of them, they don't give a damn about you. They don't even keep the laws. That's right. That's right. They're supposed to be the men of the Most High God, but they don't keep the laws. Matter of fact, bring that out. Bring that out. Because the pastor's lips, he must be speaking what? According to the scriptures. What must he be teaching the people? Because some Christians will say, yeah, yeah, we teach the people the law. We teach the people the laws. But they don't do it. You can tell by their works, by their actions, whether they're keeping the laws or not. Bring it up. 
The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. The priest's lips should keep knowledge. Let's see the knowledge of what? And they should seek the law at his mouth. So that means the priest's lips must be teaching the laws to the congregation. That's right. Teaching women that they should dress modestly. Modest means unrevealing. They're not showing their behind. They're not showing their breasts. Teaching them they must be in skirts. Teaching them that they are, uh, must not be poor. Because that's a law in, in the book of uh, Leviticus. That pork is, is, is unclean unto the Israelites. Shrimp, crabs, our people love to eat that, but it's unclean. The Most High God says that that's unclean unto you, and you must not eat that. So now, if that's a law, that means if, we, if our people do it, then we're sinning. That's a sin. But the priests are not teaching it as a church. They teach you that, oh, all things are clean if you receive it with thanksgiving. That's what they teach you. Because they lack knowledge, they lack understanding. They do not understand the scriptures. In order for you to get understanding, you must keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God first. You must repent as an Israelite and keep the laws. Why would the Most High God give them? Because remember, brother, the Most High God gives knowledge and understanding. Like Solomon, he was the wisest man on this earth. And the Most High God gave him that wisdom. So, why would the Most High God give these preachers and these pastors knowledge of his book if they're not keeping his laws? If they're rebellious children and they're brother, disobedient? You got any questions? That makes no sense. You got any questions? Brother, you got a question? You got a question, brother? It is Brother Fly. We are here teaching our people that uh, we are the Israelites according to the scriptures. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, we are the Israelites. Of course I believe in Jesus, bro. Bro, you need to check, check out their website, man. You're an Israelite. You must repent as an Israelite. Keep these laws, statutes, commandments. That's right. All right, bro, bring that out again. What must the priest's lips keep, or your pastors, your deacons? What must they keep? Read on. Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So your pastors are the messenger of the Lord. All right, brother. Make sure you, you got a fly, bro. All right, but we got a website on there. We got plenty of videos on YouTube. Check it out, bro. We out here for our people. Understand that. We out here to show you so-called blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans that you are the Israelites, according to the Bible. That's, That's right. right. That you must repent. You must remember who you are and repent. Return back to the Most High God. Keep His laws. When Christ come back, you think He's going to share power with Obama? Hell no. All of these kingdoms will be destroyed. That's right. But in order for Christ to return, his people must repent and remember who they are. That's right. That's why we out here. That's the reason why we are out here today. On the Lord's Sabbath. To show you Israelites who you are according to the scriptures. So you can remember who you are and repent. That way Christ can't come back. That's our mission. That's our goal. It's to wake our people up. Right. That's showing love one for another. That's what we out here for. We out here to show you people that you need to wake up out of your slumber. It's high time that you wake up and repent as an Israelite and return back to the Most High God. To get ourselves in order. To become self-sufficient. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to 
for you to tell us. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.